In this video, I'm gonna take a complete walkthrough of a series circuit with a battery. Let me just get my pointer out here, my battery, and three resistors in series. We're gonna walk through some common characteristics of a series circuit and a couple laws that apply to them. Now, before we get anywhere, let's apply some values to these things. We have a 120 volt battery. I have a negative terminal and a positive terminal. Each resistor have assigned a value. I've got 30 ohms, 20 ohms, and 10 ohms. Current in this circuit is gonna flow from negative to positive. We are going to use electron current flow, not conventional. Conventional tells us positive to negative, but we're going to use negative to positive. Now to determine the total circuit resistance, because in a series circuit, the key that unlocks everything is current, we need to determine what the total circuit resistance is because the current is gonna to have to go across this guy, this guy, and this guy. So it's, in order to figure out where current, we're gonna to have to figure out what 30 plus 20 plus 10 is. I think we can do this, everybody. It's gonna be 60. I did that in my head. So we've got 60 ohms of total circuit resistance. Our next step is to figure out what the current is. In order to do that, we're gonna use Ohm's law. So we're gonna use this variation of Ohm's law. It can be transposed into many different things, but we're gonna determine current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So we're gonna figure out, we got 120 volts here, we've got a resistance of 60 ohms, so therefore my current is going to be, I'm gonna do this in my head as well, two amps. And lo and behold, I'm correct. Now, we have got our total circuit resistance, our total circuit voltage, and our total circuit current. The thing with current in a series circuit is, it remains the same throughout. Once it gets flowing, you've got two amps here, here, and here, and it doesn't change. So we can use that to determine what our volt drops are gonna be across each one of these resistors. Again, going to the almighty Ohm's law. This time, we're gonna transpose it a bit. We're gonna go V is equal to I times R. So we're gonna use the current of two amps and the resistor of each resist, sorry, the resistance of each resistor to determine the volt drop across each resistor. Two amps times 10 ohms gives me 20 volts. So there's that. Two amps times 20 ohms gives me 40 volts. Next up, two amps times 30 ohms gives me 60 volts. There you go. We have now determined what the volt drop is across each one of the resistors. It wasn't that hard, was it? Next up, a good way to double check your work on this is you, there's Kirchhoff's law talks about how you have to take the algebraic sum of a circuit and it has to equal zero. What that is saying is that you're going to take this 120 and subtract 60, subtract 40, and subtract 20, and you end up with the zero as your answer. An easier way to look at the Kirchhoff's law is that the sum of the volt drops in the circuit has to equal the source. So I've got 60 plus 40 plus 20, that equals 120 volts. Therefore, I've done everything correctly. The next step in this circuit to determine everything, because we've now determined current, we've determined volt drops, now we have to determine the power being dissipated by each resistor. There's two ways we can go about that. We can go I squared R or E squared over R. In a series circuit, get in the habit of going I squared R because I squared doesn't change. Your I, your current is the one constant in this circuit. If you went with E squared over R, you'd have to remember to use 20 squared over 10. You'd have to remember to use 40 squared over 20. You'd have to remember to use 60 squared over 30. It's a really easy way to make a mistake. So just stick with the I squared R in a series circuit, you're going to be fine. So there we go, there's the formula. Power is equal to I squared R. So let's get busy here. I squared being two squared, two squared times 10 gives me power being dissipated, 40 watts. Two squared times 20 gives me power being dissipated, 80 watts. And two squared times 30 gives me power being dissipated, 120 watts. So that, look at this, we've just, we're filling this little page up. Isn't it a thing of beauty? We have 40 watts, 80 watts, 120 watts, 60 volts, 40 volts, 20 volts. The only thing left to determine really now is my overall power being dissipated. Again, two ways I can do this. I can go and I can add these up. 120 watts plus 80 watts plus 40 watts gives me 
240 watts total. That's one way to determine it. Now let's double check our work. We can punch into a calculator, I squared R, two squared times 40, which is four times, sorry, four times 60, gives me 240 watts. And that's it. You've now successfully navigated your whole way around a series circuit. We've determined everything that you could possibly want to determine. Series circuits are quite simple once you understand the tricks of them.